You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Wednesday, the 20th of December, 2017. Thank you so much for your patience yesterday. It took us over an hour to upload just the video. We are traveling and we're doing our best to continue to provide you with these reports, as we always do. If you remember, the only time we weren't able to do that when we were at sea off the coast of Spain, we just could not get a connection. That was a few years ago. You guys bore with us, and I so appreciate that. We're getting this one out today a little earlier just to try to deal with some of those internet uploading issues, which I'm afraid I'll probably face when I finish this report. What do we see going on on the S&P 500? Down 0.38% for the day. The Qs, that is the NASDAQ 100, down 0.59%. TLT 20-year bonds down 1.30%. And gold up. 0.08%. Let's jump right into the S&P 500. What do we see going on there? Well, of course, we see our going into our fifth week of up movement, even though the day was down. What we end up seeing so far with our Heiken Ashi candlesticks, this movement is well above the weekly trend line, and we'll get into that two-day trend line in just a minute. The price percent oscillator, which is our master oscillator, continues to move up, as does the derivative oscillator. So far, we're going into the third day of a five-week candle. We only have two candles drawn so far, so just three-fifths of the real candle is there, but that's what we're seeing as the week is slowly progressing toward Christmas and toward the end of the year. What do we see on the two-day candle? Well, of course, we see the two-day candle up. Again, we just finished drawing this latest candle. We had a red down candle on Friday, but Monday and Tuesday gave us a green up candle. Derivative oscillators losing some energy, but the price percent oscillator continuing to move up. Price movement is well above the two-day trend line. We continue. Remember, we pay attention to those trend lines. Those are very important to us. What about the four-hour chart? Well, it peaked out. We talked about this yesterday. It will hit a top over the course of the day on Monday the 18th. And of course, on Tuesday, we saw it open lower and move down. And again, down 0.38%. We crossed over in the morning. At the close of the morning, we crossed over going down on that four-hour chart. And the derivative oscillator turned over. Well, it turned over. And then the price percent oscillator also moving down. Derivative oscillator turned over in the afternoon. And again, that price movement moved down to about where things started off moving up in the afternoon on the prior day. So again, keep your eye on those things. Just remember, the two-day chart is still strong, and the weekly chart is also strong. But again, how long is this going to go up? We don't know. But we still have a nice stair step moving up. Not as strong as it was back on the week ending the 8th of December when we pushed above the Bollinger Bands, but they tend to broaden out. Of course, they are volatility bands. They broaden out as price moves up. Now let's go to the Qs. That's the NASDAQ 100. And we saw how it drug sideways for a couple of weeks, ending the 1st of December and the 8th of December. And then over the last prior week, ending the 15th of December, a nice up week uh, that resumed that march up that had gone on for so long. And so far this week up, again, price movement is above the weekly trend line so far. And we see the price percent oscillator really moving flat. Derivative oscillator continues to move down. So we'll continue to watch and see if and when the Qs actually tops out. Now, we did have on the two-day chart, even with the down movement over the course of the day on Tuesday because of Monday's moves, we saw that the price, uh, the, yes, price percent oscillator crossed over going up. So that candle is closed, and we do have a crossover going up. Now, if there's a lot of strong down movement over the course of the day on Wednesday or Thursday, we could actually see that change, but we'll just sort of watch and see what we see. What does that mean with the crossover going up? And again, we'll see if it's sustained. If it's a big down day on Wednesday and Thursday, that can sure pull, even though it has it is a confirmed crossover at this point. It's very weak. 
And again, strong down movement, continued down movement can actually pull that over. So we'll be watching to see what's going on there. But that means that the two day and the weekly are both in confirmed up moves now. Let's look at the, and that's on the Qs. Let's look at the four hour chart though. It's a caveat I'm giving you is we had three half days, or I'm sorry, two full days of up movement. And then on Tuesday, things went sideways and then down in the afternoon. It's not crossed over going down yet. The backup's not underway, but that backup may occur. And then once things move back over, we may have a jumping in point using that four hour chart as our trigger chart. So we'll continue to keep our eyes on things. Now, as we move to the next chart, TLT 20 year bonds, very interesting. Weekly vertical crossover going up for the week ending the 1st of December. Two weeks of up movement after that. And so far this week, we have a spinning top and down strong on the day on Tuesday, 1.30%. We see resultingly price percent oscillator headed down and the derivative oscillator also losing energy. So when you see that on the weekly chart, not a good sign as far as continued movement goes. Now, as we look at the two day chart, we also see what had been strong up movement through Friday because of the down movement over the course of particularly the day on Tuesday. We see getting close to a crossover going down on that two day chart. So those are warning bells if you had not already gotten out on TLT after jumping in with the the vertical crossover there on the week ending December the 1st. Now, when we look at our four hour chart, that's where we really see things. We saw that four hour chart crossover going up back on Thursday the 14th and actually had a jumping in point way prior to that, thanks to, of course, the weekly vertical crossover and then a retracement and then a shot up, actually closing much higher above where the closing was, well, not all that much higher. Well, about a, what about 75 cents or so? And then we saw that rotation over with red candles and then a huge drop on Tuesday morning, followed by more of a drop in the afternoon, penetrating not only our weekly, but our two day. When those things occur in one candle, those are real warning sounds. And we talked about our concern about things losing energy, particularly on that four hour chart at the end of the day on the 18th. So that is where we are as we continue to watch TLT. Things can turn around, but again, very, very negative on Tuesday. Now, lastly, we'll go back to the weekly chart and we'll take a look at gold. Of course, gold over the prior two weeks, the week ending the 8th of December, Friday the 8th, and the week ending the 15th, two strong down weeks so far Gold is showing us a, go, a green doji, which of course means indecision, tending up. We, uh, we see price movement still below the weekly trend line. It is above the two-day trend line. The downward momentum is gaining on the derivative oscillator and the price percent oscillator still headed down strongly on the weekly. As we look at the two-day, we can see that the two-day has sort of bounced off about the 118 38, 40 mark, something like that, and started moving up. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillator headed up. Again, hasn't penetrated the, uh, the weekly trend line at this point. But again, we see that it has blown through the two-day trend line. So we'll continue to keep an eye on things with that up movement. And of course, let's take a look at that four-hour chart. It crossed over going up on the morning of the, thir of the 14th, Thursday the 14th, and but for a couple of pullbacks in the afternoon on the 15th, Friday, and in the afternoon on, in the morning on Tuesday, otherwise green up movement. But as I said in the last podcast, is it going to bust through that weekly trend line or is it just going to sort of stop there and head back down? We'll continue to watch derivative oscillator losing energy, price percent oscillator still heading up. And don't forget the caveat that about this time of year, that four hour chart stops being a reliable chart for us. We'll just continue to watch and see so far it's looking good. And when things work, we use it. Folks, that's where we are at the end of the day on Tuesday the 19th as we go into 
Wednesday the 20th. If you have questions, problems, concerns, let us hear from you. We are here for you. CW at ChartingWealth.com. Please make sure to sign up for our daily market reviews so you get all the important information we have to offer. God bless my friends from the entire team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.